my, my. Rats, rats in the pantry. If you wish to dine with us, little ones, you need but pass. <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. We are the internet's red-headed stepson. We are the noob with a brush channel. As I like to say, we are the internet's most hated AOS channel. We, well, we are wearing that badge with pride. This is part two of the pre-order weekend, which we're going to concentrate on the Skaven releases now. So, I've gone over the basics for the flesh heater courts, so I'm going to do the same by you now. If you've got any comments, please put them down below. If you like the content so far, put a thumbs up. Please subscribe, please share it amongst your friends. Right, that's enough shilling for now. I will be doing some more after, but f let's get on with the show. Right then guys, if you missed part 1, or you're not interested in the Flesh Eater Courts, I'm going to go back over it by here. Carrion Empire, pre-order this week, is coming in at £95. To me, this is a marvellous starter set, because if you're not interested in Stormcast Eternals, or you're not interested in the Nighthorn, this is your second chance at getting the starter box. So, what do I mean by that? Right. £95 is coming with the war scrolls and markers for each army so I think it works out that if you add up all the Skaven parts it comes to just over £95 so you're getting a free army of flesh eater courts with it so win win and if you split it with a mate it's even better but that's not all. In this starter set, you get the core rule book, so you don't even have to pick up a new book to find out the rules for the game. You can pick this box up, paint them, and away you go on your AOS journey. Included in the price, then, we have also got two new models. One's called the Flesh Eater Courts Arch Reader, Regent, and the other one is a Skaven Bombardier. And, yeah, I just like saying Bombardier, but... For everyone else, I am going to put the model up now. Right then, guys, as you can see from the model, the Bombardier is a, a very uh, interesting model. Not only is he wreathed in uh, warp lightning, he is uh, carrying a missile, which, knowing Skaven, is probably a bad idea. But we have got some rules for this guy, which I'm going to go over. No. Right then, guys. First up, means as he called a bombardier, we may as well cover his rockets, and Right. So he comes with the Doomseeker rockets, which are range eighteen, one attack, four plus to hit, three plus to wound, minus four to rend, damage d six, which is a very good missile attack, because this guy seems to be adapt at being a ranged fighter and he's got um warp um warp seer abilities gray seer abilities sorry so he's not just throwing missiles at you he's also going to be throwing magic at you so i'm going to bring up the warp lightning rules because you're probably going to know them anyway but i think it's kind of interesting to see the pros and the cons with this guy so here we go Right then guys, Warp Light then, casting value of 5. Unit in 12 inches receives D3 mortal wounds. But, as you can see from the right up, there is a chance of getting more hits with um, the Warp Power Accelerator, I'm going to say, because I don't want to say the actual words, because I'll probably sound like an idiot. Which gives you a chance to do a D6 mortal wounds. But there's a catch to this one. If the spell is unbound. Or you fail it. Those D6 mortal wounds will go on to the bombardier. 
this also is included for the rocket as well so you could up the uh, the damage on it but there's a chance that once it fails it's, it's going off in your lap basically it, it's a very AOS centric lap rocket which nobody wants it's kind of scary to think about actually Ugh. right and guys moving on from uh, Carrion Empire we have got the Skaven Battle Tour also this week you're going to have the War Scrolls coming out with it and there's going to be dice so you're getting a little bit more for your, your money this week on your pre-orders if you're uh, Skaven rather than your Flesh Eater Courts but I think GW are probably a bit more invested in uh, Skaven because it's probably one of the more original factions that they have it's not it's so unique to GW the oh, where they've done Skaven over the years doesn't feel like it's rip it, well it's a clone of anything else fantasy related I'm not saying they've ripped off anyone but um, yeah you could you could have an argument for that but anyway and my opinion aside we have got a battle tour it's going to be chaos aligned this time not the uh, death aligned so what's in the scheme of battle tour it's going to be four allegiance abilities which is going to be army wide without picking a clan but then you've got six clan abilities so there's going to be a lot of variation within this uh, this battle tour which is for the uh, Skaven players amongst us very very good so I hope they're enjoying this and if they are please tell me down below what you're enjoying most about the battle tome so I'm going to go into one of the four legion abilities now just to show you how varied they are right and guys first up this is overwhelming mass and um, before we get started by the look of it the skaven are not just having the keyword skaven they will have skaven tied so that's probably going to differentiate the monsters and the ogres from uh, the clan rats basically so skaven tide is probably going to be the most common keyword within the book i'm guessing so it doesn't matter if it's a clan sky skyer or skyer or clan molder or if it's just going to be an unnamed clan it's a clan of your own choosing it's it's going to be a lot of varied effects so now that i've sidetracked everyone let's get into overwhelming mass overwhelming mass it's going to be very beneficial if you're running a very big horde army and not so much i would say for like rat ogres or anything like that it's going to be more for your clan rats so plus one to hit roll for hit rolls to units that have got 20 plus models so you've got a nice little buff there and it's plus one to wound rolls if it's 30 plus models so i'm gonna guess this battle tom is gonna push people to max out their unit numbers just to be able to get these type of buffs for them to be very beneficial because like a plus one to hit and a plus one to root, uh, wound because of your unit size and you're probably going to have quite a few units around the table it's just fantastic so Skaven are going to be the one to watch I think this year be interesting to see how they go on the tournament scene because as I don't know uh, anything in the battle tome I don't know how much a clan rat is so you might be able to fill up the tables better than death army with all these skeletons so let's look at another and this one i find is very skaven because if you're high up in the skaven army you don't want to be at the front because you are the one that's going to be shot first stabbed first or you're going to be eaten by other rats so being a hero you want to be at the back and because you're at the back you're going to get the bonus which is lead from the back which is basically going to be you get lookout sirs for missile attacks and 
melee attacks, which is really good because if you've got an army of archers across the way, you're going to have all your clan rats dropping first. And scurry away is basically hit and run if you're the 40k player. But yeah, they've made them unique. They're going to be bouncing in and out to fight, which you do expect. And it's very scaven. They've carried that over very well from uh, edition to edition and then even from fantasy into AOS. Right, and guys, I'm getting the Battle Tome picture back up because we're going to come back from looking at the abilities now. We're going to look at the law, which for Skaven is called the Law of Ruin, which I think is a very cracking title for Skaven. And from the spells that we've saw already, this is the one that caught my eye because this is this was I thought was just an amazing spell. I don't know whether this could be the worst one out of the book or this is just going to be the best one. But here we go. It's called Splinter. Casting value of six. Any main model six inches away, you roll a dice. And if it's higher than the wound characteristic, so for example, say you roll a 5 and their wounds are 2, it's going to it's gonna just wipe out the model. It's going to slay the model there and then. Just take it off the board. So, if you've got a unnamed character and you're just going, I want to get him across the board quickly, you just got to be careful of the grey seers. It's, if you've got that across the board it's it's a sniper spell that's fantastic that's you you can't say anything about that it's it's an extra tool that you've got to be careful of it's not just you've got range from attacks you haven't just got masses of uh, masses of attacks coming in you've also got a sniper across the board it's it's going to be a phenomenal army and like I said that about the flesh eater course these two are going to be ones to watch it's it's bonkers right then guys if you saw part one you know as soon as I get to this part it's going to be the home run so we're going to talk endless spells and then we're going to talk scenery which is quite interesting for the scaven so let's get on with the endless spells I haven't got the scrolls for the end of spells, but I'm just going to go over what I saw was interesting. So, as you see in the picture, you've got a few interesting looking models. You've got a warp lightning, which is three models acting as one, because you've got to make a, a seven inch triangle. And you've got the vermintide, and you've got the doom bell, which... They're just fantastic looking models. Even if you just add them, just dotted on your army as centerpiece part. Well, not even centerpiece, just to like add a little bit of flair. They're just amazing, let alone as endless spells. So, enough about me rambling. Let's have a look. The Vermintide, which are the little rats. The casting value of seven. After moving, the controlling player uh, picks a unit three inches away and rolls 13 dice 13 is going to be a number you're going to see a lot in this uh, battle tome and for this army and if you know anything about the law you know that 13 is a very significant number from so 13 dice and you get for each six you get one mortal wound but i know that doesn't sound a lot but if you've got a Skaven army and then you've thrown these out you're getting extra mortal wounds just for having rats on the table but you've got a little bit of protection from this spell because if you're the Skaven army it does not affect you if they turn that if somebody turned that around and aimed it towards you the rats will just run through your feet getting ready to charge back so doesn't sound a lot it doesn't sound like it's got a very good positive but you get also you get a very good buffer as well because you just they go through they don't even affect it stride you just get ready turn them around throw them back at the enemy it's always good 
but it's probably not it's probably the weakest one the next one we're going to look at is the doom bell which is a casting value of six this is the one that i liked but it's probably not the best one which is probably always the case you roll 3d6 if you roll 13 each unit within 13 inches suffers d3 mortal wounds and on top of that any skaven unit that is within 13 inches of the doom bell they don't have to take battle shock tests so you're whittling down the army and your troops are getting in faster because they aren't going to worry about taking damage so it's a win-win spell it's probably pro it's probably the safer one out of this and warp lightning but I think you're going to get more results on this one than any other ender spell for the Skaven. Right, and let's end the, the ender spells for Skaven with Warp Lightning, casting value of 8. As I said earlier, you've got to form a former triangle 26 inches away from the caster. Each uh, section of the triangle, each corner, has got to be 7 inches away from each other. So you've got to make space for that on the table and what this does is on a four plus any unit within three inches if i remember right these stuff is d3 mortal wounds if you roll an unmodified six it's d6 mortal wounds and if i re the other part is if you try and fly through it or run through it i think it stops the movement or half sets because you've got to be because it's a vortex basically you can't move through it properly so it'd be interesting to see this pop up i think this could be as much of a hindrance to the caster as well as the opponent so to me the safest the safest one out there is doom is the doom bell but i could be wrong i might be seeing too much negative in that one you gotta let me know down below. You gotta tell me in the comment section what you believe. I could be I could be speaking up my ass. I could I could be in line with everyone else, but I don't know until you tell me. And let's be fair, that's what the comment section's for, and it to tell me if I'm wrong or not. So let's end this video then guys. We're gonna end it on scenery like I did the last one. Because we all know it's not a GW release unless there's scenery involved and for the Skaven the scenery that we've got is the Norholes which I've heard a little bit of discussion saying that people don't like the fact that they've actually got a model rather than just appearing on the board but I think they're fantastic looking bits of scenery but they've also got an advantage for being put on the board so from what the bits that I could get from the community page it's if you've got a unit within six inches of a no hole at the start of the movement phase you could say that they're going through the tunnel and they can appear the other side of the board so you're gonna get your you're gonna get your army up and about quick and probably jumping out the back of a of the other army as well so you're getting them from all angles but if you've got your grey seers close to these no holes, the law is that because there's such a, a rift within the realms, going through the chaos realm, this is going to give you bonuses to your casting. So you get plus one to your cast and plus one to your unbind because it acts as arcane scenery for Skaven. Which, if you've got to be careful about negative effects, because things will blow up because it's scaven at the end of the day these no holes are good little buffers to help the year uh, grace years so it's not it's not the biggest kit it's not the most you know fascinating kit that they've ever put out but he's got a lot of buffs for this one and if you if you're playing scaven and you're playing uh, clan rats more than just clan molder which is their monsters you're going to see the benefit of this one because it's going to be moving you up the board quicker so it's just a fantastic bit of kit 
if I was a Skaven player, I'd make sure I get about two or three of these kits. And that's it, guys and dolls. That's the end of the video. If you watched it all the way through, thank you for watching the video and sticking with me. It may have seemed a bit rambly, but uh, I do apologise. That seems to be my way of doing things. But if you enjoyed it, leave a like, leave a comment. If you didn't enjoy it, thumbs down. Leave a comment to say how I can improve. Always going to be a benefit. And if you just want to chat, I'm always there to talk in the comments. Because, as I say, it's a community channel for the community, run by the community. Um, if you didn't watch the other video, I'm going to tell you here now. We've got the Teespring account. So if you go onto Teespring and type in Noob with a Brush, you will see our storefront, which is a couple of hoodies, a couple of t-shirts, and more importantly, because if you watched my videos before, you know how much I love a cup of tea. I got cups on there ready. So you can use that for your tea. You can use it for your coffee. You can use it for a water pot. But that's heresy, remember. Water pots are not in your cup. We all have that accident where we've dipped our brushes in the cups. But that's the accident. You don't do it intentionally. We've also got PayPal and we've also got Patreon. If you're able to donate, um, please, thank, and I will say thank you very much, because it will go back into the channel and hopefully I'll be able to bring you bigger content. If not, still thank you very much because you've watched the video. If you can share it amongst your friends, if you can, even if it's, even if you just say, subscribe to this guy because he talks, he talks rubbish and it could be funny now and again that's even beneficial so because it's the end of the video i have got now got two videos i gotta try and upload so i shall see you midweek thank you very much for your time